Good evening, dandies. Welcome to Undetermined, the podcast. So we've got Rich and Eric from Truck Stop Love. Goddamn right. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Absolutely. Been jamming your shit all week. Um, nice. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Checking out some of the other bands that uh, you posted from the area, anyway. Uh, Headlight Rivals, man. I've really been digging their shit. Yeah, they're um, a good band. And you guys did, uh, did you, are, you got an upcoming show with Godzillionaire, or we're big uh, Godzillionaire fans, too. Oh, nice. Yeah, no, we played with them uh, a couple months ago. We played uh, a couple shows this summer. We did, uh, what was it, Rich, our second or third? pair of uh reunion shows in the last couple of years yeah we played at the bottleneck and then we played at midfest in manhattan uh-huh. this festival they i think it's a week long now or close to it they have yeah. bands all week well that kind of reunion just from that era i mean that i don't know maybe it's just because that's where my age is or john's you know all of us yeah. really that was a special era in my mind. Yeah. You know, there was something kind of magical uh, about that whole period. Uh, and you guys got to like be a part of that. And that's pretty yeah. cool. Mm-hmm. Yorgis, you want to talk about the early nineties? <laughs> yeah, we can. <laughs> Absolutely we love can. that shit. We do a lot. I, I used to work at, do you guys remember the planet out of Springfield? Oh yeah, comes or Channel Z. Yeah, yeah. I was a DJ out there. That's oh, where nice. I heard you guys. Oh, is that the one you, we played? A, I don't know how many festivals there. Was yeah, the, you did the station some, that put them on. Probably. Yeah, we 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 put on some we put on some shit with you guys. Okay. Yeah, that's how I heard you. Yeah, it was and Spanish. I know. Yeah, we had like mm-hmm. a um a show that one of our Joe Blonde mm-hmm. did. Uh, mid by midwest so he'd he'd you know play the stuff from kind of regional stuff and you guys got thrown in there a lot i right. remember that and that was fun you guys and pa yeah, I remember I were kind of the the big draws right we yeah. got a funny story about i don't know if it was the first or second time we played down there and we pulled up to a stoplight and this car pulled up next to us we had kansas plates uh mm-hmm. rolled down the window and said hey are you guys pa and we're like, no. And they rolled their window up and drove off. Yeah, <laughs> uh, <fuckers. laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of hard to find any love, really, in Missouri in general. <laughs> you know? I just, you well, know. I mean, in the, you know, in that era, it was like a bunch of four or five sweaty Long-haired dudes with flannels and t-shirts right. and Chuck Taylors, like you <laughs> know, you pull you up mean? next to them at a <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's like these guys have got to be in a band, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, <laughs> the only difference between us and and Pa, I think, uh, in terms of of sheer looks, is that they looked like they should have been on magazine covers, and we looked like <laughs> right. we shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, That's a good true. Way to put it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting though, man. I was was thinking about that, and my wife and I were talking about it earlier. It's just like, I and I saw this article on the internet, and of course, all kinds of shit on the internet, but it's like, you know, they they were talking about the music of Kansas, you know, or or like, you know, bands throughout Kansas. Like, I don't know. I just, I started thinking about you guys, and I was thinking about Paw, and it's like one of the other bands that they listed, of course, was the band Kansas. (laughs) <laughs> you know sure. and i'm like it happens every time right and i'm like you know is there even such a thing when it comes to that area to like a regional sound you know what i mean because i couldn't say necessarily that you guys sounded like paw or, or the paw sounded like you or, or, or anything like no that. i think 
it, it was really strange because if anything, we had more in common with Uncle Tupelo, and we were, you know, on separate sides. They were, you know, coming from right. They were coming from St. Louis, and, <laughs> yeah. And honestly, guys, we were all the way in Manhattan, Kansas. Right. So everybody just assumed right. we were a Kansas City band. Mm -hmm. um, no, we were ninety minutes down the turnpike. Yeah, you're out there a ways past that. I mean, way past Lawrence, and yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Almost to. And you know, Lawrence was always the really cool place. And, and um, we loved bands like Zoom and Kill Creek. They were kind of our contemporaries in Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, they, they were two of the bands that really helped us out and brought us, uh, you know, up to Kansas City and Lawrence in the first place. But, um, you know, Paw was kind of a band that we just encountered, you know, a little bit later. Like we didn't have like a relationship with them growing up or anything. We right. just kind of. You know, found them when when you know we hit the kind of the bigger Midwest scene or whatever. Right. But, uh, yeah, we were very we were very isolated out in Manhattan, Kansas, and and I think uh, you know we felt that same sense that kind of Uncle Tupelo did out where they were as well, and and uh, I think that's why we kind of connected. Right. Them. And, and I know I say St. Like Louis, the Jayhawks, them, but... and mm -hmm. the replacements, and you know the Twin Tone bands and stuff like that. It was just like these were the bands that we really felt, you know. A, a kinship with i guess right and yeah and i always and i guess that's the thing i was just kind of thinking and talking to her about the replacements it's like you know there's there's some replacement sound in there and it's like but you know they're and i guess they're certainly midwestern you know um you yeah i think that that's way. a fair statement um if you want to look at it that way but then it's like you know i you know and I go back and forth. I mean, there's there's lots of roots rock and, and shit that we listen to and stuff from around here that's definitely you know you know, like bluegrass influence and things like that, that where we can hear the region. But, you know, when it comes to rock and roll, I don't know. I just, I wanted to ask you guys about that. I mean, I, I guess the way to put it is just like, I mean, I, I was in a band a long time ago in high school and we weren't, we weren't like, let's play Illinois songs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right. This is nothing we right. did. I mean, you know, we were influenced by bands from all over the place, you know, yeah. maybe what we could get at record stores. So, you know, it was just, I, I didn't know if that was just something you felt that was kind of a manufactured thing or if you identify as a Kansas band. Or... I'm going to let Jurgis take that. Well, I think we do. I mean, we identify as Kansas Midwest. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, we, like you said, there wasn't, the only band I can think of locally was the Pedal Jets would probably be a band that came before us mm -hmm. that we kind of similar sound. Uh, but, you know, I think all of us were huge Replacements fans. Yeah. And then Soul Asylum. Yeah. And then... Mm -hmm. Dinosaur oh, Jr. Yeah, yeah, Dinosaur Jr. Yeah. And then we kind of mix, mix that in with, you know, when we started here and, you know, some of the, if you want to call it No Depression stuff, mm -hmm. or, or brought a little bit of that country right. into it and, you know, mix it with that punk. Yeah. Yeah, we don't. I don't consider us a grunge band. We get thrown in with them, right? We were not grungy, right? Well, and how much of that is just that <laughs> era, too? You know, um, right? Especially at that time. I mean, it's hard to categorize mm -hmm. you guys, really, right? You got to put you somewhere, right? That's true. Right. <laughs> we yeah. don't have to, right? <laughs> right. Uh, clearly, but. You know, that's people tend to do that. We categorize right. people. Well, it's, it's, well, there was ahead. that, there was that weird moment in time, you know, I was just going to say when, when we, when we got, uh, the buzz, all the buzz that we got came from this first demo that we did in the back of a record store in, uh, uh, Manhattan, <laughs> Kansas. And when the CMJ picked it up, that's when, you know, we had a couple labels kind of start looking at us and calling and whatnot, and they would fly out to, manhattan to see us which is <laughs> yes um you know <laughs> culture I mean? shock yeah yeah but 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 i think what they were reacting to was really um the songwriting and the and the the honesty like rich has these great songs and he has a, a really uh authentic feel right. right like when he sings he sings from his heart and so like beyond the fact that we played sloppy mm -hmm. and that we didn't play our instruments very well uh and we were just kind of doing it with a lot of exuberance and enthusiasm i think that there was a maturity in the songwriting that was coming forward and kind of like this authentic thing and if you listen to a lot of bands from that era 
there was a lot of people that were just mired up in this grunge deal and it was just, you know, right. riff rock. And I think what separated right. us at the time is that what, what Rich and Matt were writing was more than riff rock. And we just happened to have long hair and look like everybody <laughs> right. else. <laughs> and you don't have to play clean and polished to be sincere. Yeah. yeah I mean, listen to the Velvet Underground. Right. You know? Exactly. Some of my favorite bands are terrible musicians. And we learned how to play eventually. Like, we're better. <laughs> <laughs> are we? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I don't mean like that being an insult, but I, I feel like I understand mm -hmm. what you're getting at. Yeah, I mean, it was it was honest, man. And, and you know, it was one of the first things when we did our first demo. It was me and Rich and a guy named Steve who uh, is now in the Headlight right. Rivals. Uh, his name's Seven now, and he's... Uh, they're bass player, and it was just the three of us. And when I heard Rich's songs for the first time in the studio, even after we'd played live for like a year together, I was like, oh, man, like there's something here. Like you're really yeah. good, Rich. And I was writing half the songs <laughs> at that point, too. And Rich was like, you are, too. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm done. <laughs> and so I, I stopped writing songs, and, and Rich continued. And it was just like this thing where you could you could see there was a clear line between you know what he was uh, feeling and what he was putting and in, and in, uh into song and it was special and and there, nobody else was doing that at that time rich was coming from rockabilly uh -huh. he was coming from dwight yoakam he was coming from foster mm -hmm. and lloyd and you know a lot of bands that 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 were not considered cool back then so uh you know we filtered that through dinosaur jr and and the replacements and we ended up with oh, first cool. love yeah, I mean it's a yeah, it's interesting. I mean, uh, seeing those guys too, uh, headlight rivals. Just looking at them, really, they look a, a lot like uh, some Missouri contemporaries of ours, Big Smith. It's like with the overalls and the bibs and long beards. They're playing punk. <laughs> it's like, yeah. yeah, do you remember Ditch Witch? Yeah, yeah, we used to yeah. play with them all the time. We're, friend, were, yeah, we're pretty yeah. tight with them. Yeah, we just had on. Uh, speaking of kind of country punk. Uh, we just had on William Elliott Whitmore. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're familiar with him. Bloodshot Records. Yeah, He's out Bloodshot of Iowa. Records, uh, Chicago. He lives in Iowa, okay. Iowa City, around that area. But yeah, really good stuff. Awesome. But we try to, yeah, we try to get as many like regional kind of acts as we can. So I think there's just a lot of stuff that needs to be exposed around here that just doesn't get enough mention. But you know, it's it's and it's sort of like looking at that as of how rock was manufactured or or how it was sometimes manufactured in the nineties. My wife and I were talking about it's like I mean Prince was from Minnesota, <laughs> you know, and nobody ever said this is like that's the Minnesota sound. Mm. Yeah, I mean he's he's this glamorous, amazing musician mm -hmm. who looks great, you know, and it's like nobody would ever think he was from Minneapolis. That's Something not you have to remind that. people of. And then it's like right, you'd think right. he's from Mars. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then it's like you look at the Seattle sound and sometimes, you know, we argue it's like, well, how much of that was just record companies, you know, manufacturing or, or finding the bands that it's like, who sounds like Nirvana around here and and doing yes. that. It's like, how many, right. there was a lot of that. It's like, how many did we miss out on that were probably great just in a little different category and how much it could have changed? Yeah. Well, Rich, Rich, we uh we have a ton of stories that we could tell about disappointing yes. people with our image. Let's hear some of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, we can talk about MTV. We can talk about ABC in concert. We can talk about all of the the times where our label or somebody was counting on us to like yeah. really deliver, and all we did was go out and fuck it up. Let's, let's hear know? about fucking up MTV. <laughs> Let's start, yeah, start there. We'll start with MTV. So, uh, Yargus, I'll let you intro this one. I'm, I'm just setting you up. Um, so we we won this contest um, with that first demo that mm -hmm. Eric mentioned, and so we got we had to go to Dallas to play in this uh, band contest. I think it was Arlington. So to speak. Mm -hmm. Was it Arlington? Well, that's yeah. right outside of Dallas. Same area, yeah. So we get, you know, the night before, we just played a show in Manhattan and got completely blasted and had to leave <laughs> early in the morning. <laughs> that's and, a long-ass drive. Right. And uh, we're shotgunning beers in the van all the way down there. We get to the room, and pretty much everybody passes out. And then the next day, we get over to the, I think it was this big auditorium, mm -hmm. and started getting told what to do by the 
the stage hands or whatever. So we just pretty much said, <laughs> fuck you guys and laughed. <laughs> and so we go back to the hotel and of course get, you know, we're drinking all day and we get back over to the, when we're supposed to play and <laughs> find out it's a, it's a mother's against <laughs> drunk driving. Oh no. Sponsoring it. <laughs> Oh, we didn't well, drive. We, uh, we didn't drive. No, we yeah. had a sober well, driver. Someone else driving us, yeah. But we pulled that's up good. in the van and, and we opened up the side door of the van and all these beer cans come crashing out. Well, uh, and there's there's literally like uh, you know, two two cars smashed against each other and some sort of like right. you know yeah. statue what out front when you drink and drive. Show you what happens, yeah. I'm sure those mothers are against drinking in general. I mean, yeah, they don't like the drunk driving, but yeah. Probably didn't care for that. No, I mean, yeah, it would have been nice if someone would have told us that, but we were just doing our thing. <laughs> well, and you then, would just think anybody putting something together with that, with any kind of musician, yeah. you might check first. <laughs> yeah. So what happened? Well, we, we, we did, we had a huge, Rich has hit on something kind of normal for Truck Stop Love, which is uh -huh. a huge chip on our shoulder. And like being from Manhattan, you know, even in Kansas, it's not the mm. cool city. And so like right. when we went out of town, we had an even bigger chip. And, um, you know, we got there and they were like, you know, you have these rules and these rules and the curtain opens mm -hmm. here and you have to stand here. And when this band is on, yeah. you have to be ready and blah, blah, blah. Except there was another band that was on that bill that was fourth and they were not having to follow those rules. There were four bands, but three of us were like being briefed and being yelled at all day. And then they said the fourth band is going to show up later because they're recording mm -hmm. a demo for a major label uh -huh. right now and they can't be bothered with you guys. And they're just going to wow. show up last and they're going to play. Oh, and they yeah. were called the yeah. Toadies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? So, we were so, actually yeah. friends. <laughs> no, it's great. Yeah, they were. We didn't meet them that night. I'm sure they're really nice people. If I was them, I would have come in and played the show <laughs> and left, just like they did, because right. it was a jackass. <laughs> but from our perspective, they were like, you know, fated to win anyway. Right. Of course, they won. Right. So it's like whatever. We just assumed uh, oh, this is even more rigged. But we got hammed, and we were like <laughs> pissing on the stage. And we were like, like, right. like when the curtains closed, we were like, like literally turned around and like pissed <laughs> on the stage because we were so mad. And then like all of our friends right. came up front to rock out and they kicked them out and they said, you have to go back and sit down in your seats. And so we what? were pissed and we, we took our shirts off and we like <laughs> turned it up as loud as we could and mapped oh. his guitar on stage. And uh, right. it was just a shit show, but we had so much fun to take them off. No, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's like one of our first guests was uh, yeah, Lisa Umbarger, the bassist from the Tonys. Oh, yeah. She would have been in the band then. That was the original lineup. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I know, like, Chuck Mooney and maybe, maybe Mooney Chuck Mooney, uh, uh, yeah. Matt, uh, Matt Winchell uh, on drums, probably. Yeah. It, I know those cats. And uh, yeah, trust me, they'd find it funny. Yeah. <laughs> they, oh yeah. No, they I'm, would. I'm sure if they heard our if they heard our side of the story, okay. they would be right yeah, there. They will. Being like, <laughs> yeah, they will. Yeah, they will. No, I promise they'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, maybe I don't know if they're going to recognize this, but we can tell tell you. Hey, Toadies, it was called MTV's oh. Rock and Campus Bash. <laughs> That's That's right. All right. And we ended up hanging out with Steve Isaacs, the VJ, all night because he was like, yeah. "You guys remind me of my friend. You guys have a drinking problem." <laughs> Uh, yeah now she'll definitely find that funny yeah yeah they've all got a good sense of humor about it that's so, awesome yeah i mean we don't know we haven't really talked like todd lewis or, or vaden or, or whatever you want by the singer he kind of you know yeah. when the band kind of split you know we we got kind of lisa and the divorce so. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know oh, nice. yeah i don't want to talk and she's awesome about. Yeah, they're just like yeah. down to earth and know. sweet. Maybe a really and... nice guy. I have no idea. Just, I've never met him. I I don't want to speculate. He might be. Uh, well, isn't it funny how like you know in 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 every band's journey they have like this you know this these set of stories that they tell themselves right. that kind of reinforce who they are. And the Toadies probably had no idea that like in our little dumb band story that they like were mythologized in this way of you know the band that came <laughs> right. in didn't have to follow the rules, won the, the competition, right. and, then, and then scored a major label deal. <laughs> right. so they were the villain. Yeah, right, and she's villain. telling us stories about, <laughs> right. like, getting fucked around by yep. Bush. Same thing. When right. she's on the road with them. She rolls down the hill. Yeah, I'd love like, to hear yep. that. Your Different levels. Oh, yeah. We were on the bottom <laughs> yeah. level. Yeah, I've heard enough of those stories, and I was like, oh, man, I, I don't even like Gavin Rossdale now. 
<laughs> it's like it's like no, I never met him though. Yeah, but I mean, you know, we we were all in the same yeah. We were all in the same deal, you know, touring in the van and making no money and sleeping on the floor. So there's, it's impossible to like hold a grudge against right. anybody for, for stupid. Yeah, stuff it like is. That. But it is a pretty funny story. <laughs> yeah, that's a great story. So did you? Uh, but you guys ended. Uh, didn't you end up winning that contest? Or didn't you win a contest that got you? So you won the contest to get you there. That was the. Yeah, it was like a regional uh, thing. Yeah, yeah. I think that's as far as Truck Stop Love winning anything ever got. No, we didn't even win the local Manhattan band contest. <laughs> <Really? laughs> <laughs> nope. Yeah, <that's> true. <laughs> we won that one. Yeah. Uh, uh, some band from year. Nebraska. Oh, yeah, it was a band from Nebraska. <laughs> no Left Stone or something, I think they were yeah. called. That sounds yeah. right. They were on the uh, the student union activities oh. circuit. Oh, yep. Yep. You know what I mean? Those like, bands who play like student union shows for like yeah. thousands of dollars instead of playing for yeah, comedians do that gig too. For like, yeah, they do the same yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's I guess it's pretty cush. I mean, they get uh, they get taken care of pretty well if you're like a breaking comedian, but still, it kind of right. locks you into that. Yeah, I mean, you know, we're we're, we're playing you know like house parties and and you mm-hmm. know shitty bars you know, basement bars and stuff like that. And these guys are playing like, you know, student union shows. And it's like, yeah, we might have had, you know, uh, less people at our show or more people at our show probably, but they were the right people, right? They're people who actually cared about music instead of some jackass who walks into the SUA. And it's like, oh, right. these guys sound like R.E.M. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. Just making more little, you know, yeah, A&R gremlins. Well, I don't know. I mean, there, there's some good A and R people out there. There really are, and I, I kind of blame it, you know, more on the the label head than anything. It's just like, you know, what's the A and R guy got for me? Yeah, you know, it's not, you know, because those guys have to have a good ear. Yeah, I mean, our A and R guy really believed in us, and I've I've told Rich this story before, but um, I I was in Santa Monica, California, and we were recording our first EP for for Scotty Brothers, yeah, the, the label that signed us, right. And, uh, Weird Al was recording right. Alapalooza down the hall from us. Oh. I'm, I'm literally like listening to one of the label heads who happened to produce the first two Kiss albums. Uh-huh. Uh, Richie Wise. He was the yep. co-producer. He was in two dust. Kiss records. Yeah, he was oh. in dust before that. And he's like, you know, around the corner from me and the door is like half open and I can hear him talking about <laughs> an r guy. And he's like, Yorgos, is it okay for me to tell this? Please do. I don't care. <laughs> he's like, he's... He's like, why did you sign these guys? Oh, no. no. (laughs) And our A&R guy is defending us. And he's like, they have really good songs. And this is what the kids (laughs) want right now. And this is like, you know, authentic, honest music. And he's like, they can't (laughs) even play their instruments. Oh, no. (laughs) And I'm sitting there going, yeah, this is not going to go well. You know? And it did not. It did not. In the long run, it did not. But you know what? We got to go to Arden. We got to uh, record at Memphis for a month with oh, our yeah. hero, Jody Stevens, and to, you know, make a record in the studio that the replacements yes. and Big Star, you know, played in. And, and it was, I mean, we, we lived like so many of our dreams. We, the, 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 uh, Rich, what was the, the fucking place they put up, put us up in, in Santa Monica was where Nirvana had been like a couple of months before when oh, they recorded yeah, Nevermind. The hotel. That, oh, yeah, Sherman like, Oaks. Nice. Yeah, we or were, the apartments. Yeah. yeah, we were just around, and we, we did all that stuff during that era, and it was uh, it was exciting, you know? Our heroes, you know, Nirvana and yeah. Urge Overkill and bands like that were playing in the same clubs, and uh, it was exciting, you know? It was, it was fun, so I don't have any regrets or anything about it, but... Um, yeah, we were just never cut out for, I guess you would say, prime time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I disagree. But, I mean, like like I say, everybody's everybody's perspective is weird and different, though. I mean, like I say, it's I, – I tell, you know, tell people about it, you guys coming on, and you know, I didn't want to jinx anything, but just telling friends and stuff. And it's like, you know, a lot of people around here know, you know. And it's like, you know, it's, it's kind of crazy that I, you know, tell other people in other parts of the world. About to get something like, who's this? You know, I, I don't know. So it's a, they're like, oh wow, it's really fucking oh, good. You know, check them out. I can't believe you never heard it. But yeah, it's it's all you know. It gets localized. It, you know, no matter where you are. I mean, what you're exposed to. So Matt, you, you were spinning them back in the day on the radio, right? Where I heard them. Yeah. 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 Because yep. Matt was a DJ there at the Planet yep. or Channel Z. 
Yeah, yeah that's where I heard about that. That's where I heard yeah. That, so. In my world, you're right. Yep, it was all me. I made all those programming <laughs> decisions, and wow. <laughs> yeah, I was a peon, man. I was low man on that totem pole, but I was sure yeah. happy to be on that totem pole. You know, because it it was as cool a yeah. job as I was going to get. Well, you know, that was back in the day when you could like turn on the college radio station and hear like six or seven great bands in a mm-hmm. row that you'd never heard of before, and now everything's delivered to you in a fucking algorithm. And I get it; it's kind of cool. It's like sometimes Spotify gets it right when they give me the next song. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know. But it seemed more organic then. Mm-hmm. It seemed more like yeah. sometimes it's really wrong though. <laughs> sometimes my spotify anyway sometimes it's really wrong of course my tastes are all over the place but yeah yeah it's weird when a computer tries to figure that shit out I and mean, it's probably my fault <laughs> you know just telling him to play like some dr dre and then telling him to play some replacements after that they just it's like okay where's the middle <laughs> well yeah no algorithm can figure that out it's your own personal taste and that's why you know uh having having a you know a group of people around you that are you know into similar stuff and exposing you to different stuff there's always sub you know subgroups in in communities and uh you know i mean rich right. rich is like a huge buddy holly and richie valens fan you know and how many of those you know people are you right. going to find in a punk right. rock indie community yeah not many not, yeah well you'd be yeah. surprised yeah. though you know i think part of what i'm finding is and what I've enjoying it. John and I kind of talk about these things, you know, as we grow and evolve, like you can have a bunch of different interests and likes right. musically and it's okay. Right. You don't have to be like ashamed that I listen to, you know, this country song and then I listen to a ska song and then I listen to a thrash song, yeah. you know, and I could do that all in one day, you know, and, well, and as you I can enjoy older, them all. As you get older, too, you start to it's get okay. less. But, I mean, I, I can remember being younger, and it was like you, you, there were some friends you didn't dare tell, you know, that you liked Willie Nelson. Right. You know, if if you were going to be cool in the Misfits <laughs> Fiend Club or whatever, you know, you didn't tell them that. Right. Well, I mean, honestly, the Misfits are a rock right. band. Let's yeah. come on, yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> bro, bro, it down. Mm-hmm. You know, take the take the distortion away, and all the he's doing yeah. his best Elvis yep. impression. Elvis fifties is, is doo wop. Um, that's what it is. It's doo wop with distortion. You know, uh, that's where it comes from. The people that can't recognize that stuff are the ones that you know have small minds about right. music. So, or you know, really, I hate that shit too yeah. when people do that just get small minded about it and snobby and you know one of my biggest rants or when it when they had like uh the remaining members of nirvana getting together with paul mccartney and so many people were like snooty and <laughs> right. bitchy about it and i was like that's yeah. fucking cool yeah. and by yeah, the way it's a good yeah. tune well john and right kurt wouldn't be like him. They would no they would cool. think it was fucking cool too yeah, they would think it was cool do we lose you did you hate Sirvana? is that what happened <laughs> <laughs> no. Sir, did you call them Sir, yeah. Vana? Sir Paul McCartney. Uh, I hate that for sure. No, the Beatles are like my favorite band of all time. I didn't I even know them. they did it, honestly. Well, oh, you just, should check it out. They were just dicking around, and he like played on a song. Like he literally oh, walked okay. into the studio, and they were like, "Hey, it's yeah. these guys. You want to jam?" And then, like somebody told him later, he's like, "You know, you were playing with Nirvana." <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Who? Yeah, I can what? see that. I've read stories about that. Yeah, but no, I, I mean, yeah, the Beatles are the the greatest band of all time. So I'm I'm not. Uh, yeah, I'm not now about Paul McCartney's on Mars. I mean, it, he might as well be. He's just been playing for so long in so many circuits that in a band, he just probably wouldn't recognize. I, I read another article one time. I don't know how true it is, but like he sent somebody out to like he was hanging out with some young band and like sent him out with like a dollar fifty to go get him like a, a fifth of whiskey so he could have some drinks with him. You just had no connection, like how much whiskey costs anymore, you know, because <laughs> he never like bought it. Just like it's been purchased for him, you know, since like you know 1962 or yeah. whatever. It's probably the last time he bought a bottle without just having it stocked in his home, you know. Not that he's right. You know, the kid was just like, I'm I can't right. Tell him. Yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> that's that was the spirit of the story. He was like, I just can't, I can't bring myself to say, hey, that's not enough money. So I just bought it. <laughs> you know? And that's not to shit on Paul McCartney at all. No, it's just that, you know, and I'm glad that he doesn't know 
because that means he was able to devote himself to, you know, music and not have to worry about shit like that. For Paul McCartney couldn't be bothered <laughs> with the price of milk because he was writing <laughs> right. so many great songs. Right. <laughs> but, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. There's always a way to spin it. You can say it's a good thing or a bad thing. I think it's a good thing. Wasn't that a thing, like, recently with politicians? They were like, right. you don't even know how much a yeah, gallon of milk is. Yeah, no, that was George yeah, Bush, wasn't it? it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, and more. I mean, they do that shit all the time. It was just in, like, an episode of Success Show on HBO, too. They were talking about that. Guy was like... I love that show. Oh, it's a great fucking show. Um, was chewing out, like, uh, Kieran Culkin's character or whatever. Just like, how much does a gallon of milk cost? Yeah. That's... Yeah, that's what it was. That's what yeah. I'm sorry. That's a that's yeah. a popular yeah, yeah it's a popular call. reference. But it's yeah, that's a great fucking show. Great acting in there, man. And I don't know. I I'm tr- still trying to figure out exactly who who we're looking at there. I think it's maybe like I don't know the Roger Ailes family or uh, it's the Murdochs. The Murdochs, yeah. I think it's kind of a mix of both. Absolutely, he's from Dundee, you know, from Scotland. So just changing it up from Australia a little bit. Yorgos, are you watching TV yet? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I not watch TV? I don't know. We never we never bonded over the TV. Yorgos doesn't nah. watch programs. Not very many. I, I usually don't, and I even just posted it like earlier that I don't typically watch shows. I watch movies. I mean, I love movies. Um, but I've got yeah. like I'm just now getting get trying to get through Breaking Bad. Yeah, I still haven't finished that. It's great, but I haven't finished it. I started watching it, and then it was like kind of a little one of those little mini dark periods of your life that just kind of pops yeah. out of nowhere, and you get to and it's just like nope, too dark. Got to go away from this. <laughs> right. I need right. happy and funny right now, and then I never went back. Yeah. How far are you are you in uh, Breaking Bad right now, Rich? Uh, I think I'm in season three. You might be a little Maybe. ahead of me. I think so. I think I'm. <laughs> yeah, that's one I just kind of slept on. The Sopranos. I never saw that. Never finished it. There's so much shit out there. There's so much content. For TV. Yeah. And yeah. I just, well, I mean, now there is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much stuff. How do you keep up? Because, like, you know, I say this about friends of mine. You're just like, oh, did you see this show? This show? This show? It's like, for my calculations, you're telling me you watched about 18 hours of TV this week. Yeah, that's kind of. <laughs> Sad, yeah, yeah. How, actually. Much. How did you get away with that? You know, how does your wife let you? It's like football, you know, guys keeping up games. I'm like, how did they let you watch that much football? <laughs> I get away with one game a week, yeah. and and that's all I'm brave enough to ask yeah. for, honestly. I, I don't even watch NFL, I watch like the I watch college, I watch the Tigers. That's it. I'm in Columbia, Missouri, by the way. The, oh, the okay. anti Kansas, I'm sorry, you're that mm-hmm. guy. Blue note. Mm-hmm. The blue note. Well, these aren't Lawrence guys, so you don't have to worry yeah. as much about it. It's, it's more of a Lawrence Columbia rivalry, <laughs> unless true. it is. I'm mistaken. I think so. I saw one of the greatest rock shows I've ever seen in Columbia, Missouri. Which one was that? Oh, yeah. What was it? Big Star. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Back with the. Yeah. They didn't, didn't Alex show them? They played. Their like fine, their farewell show, like university here, didn't they? No, it wasn't a it wasn't a farewell show. It was a reunion. Are we in your show? And and we saw them, and a teenage fan club was there, wow. and REM was awesome. there. And oh wow! Everybody was there, and uh, we met Jody Stevens after the show, and uh, he was wearing an Afghan wig. Oh, shirt. cool! We told him he liked Afghan wigs, and then we asked him if he was still producing records, and he said, "Not really, but." Uh, are you going to come to Arden? And we said, sure. <laughs> <And> so, <laughs> we, we convinced Jody Stevens to produce. Uh, oh, so that happened to you. He produced and to sing on the first thing that he sang on since yeah, uh, 1972. Right on. So that happened here. Yeah, I was wondering about that. That all show. happened in Columbia. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Right down the street from me. But yeah, I just, I wondered about that. Yeah, they just, I, apparently they just asked them because hmm. nobody had asked them. Oh. And they were agreed which is you know alex chilton was not one to normally do something right. like that but he agreed to do it for for some strange yeah. reason well not yeah rich. probably right. <laughs> they paid him a lot of money they said they'd pay him <laughs> he had to leave his dishwashing job for <laughs> right. a few hours 
Yeah. 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 That's kind of weird. He's like, I'm you precious, never know. but I'm not that precious if you're going to pay me. He was already loaded. Yeah. You, really? You Alex know Chilton was loaded by then? In yeah, the early his 90s? Parents were, his parents were rich. Huh. Oh, that's right. From back wow. in the day. Yeah. Yep. yeah. And the box tops. Yeah, the box tops. That that's bag. true. Yep. But that was a long time ago. This was 93. Yeah, because about, yeah. All right. Did he blow it all playing in, what was that band? Who knows? Was in Panther or something? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, Taz <Tab> Falco. <laughs> Tab Falco. Yeah, he could have. Yeah. It's weird that, yeah. Because I didn't get that connection. I was like, why in the hell? Because, you know, he's from, they're from like Memphis, right? Or he is, or, yeah 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 so it's like why the hell it's Columbia? crazy reading that yeah. uh they had that autobiography the did you read that rich the alex chilton autobiography i didn't know uh, i think i did a man yeah. called destruction just came out like yeah, a couple years ago but it's really yeah. cool because they get to that reunion show and it's like you know when you're reading these rock biographies about your favorite bands uh -huh. and your you know your legends it's really cool to like all of a sudden intersect with the moment in time that you shared with them. And it just happens to be like, you know, a moment that was important for them too. So that was uh, kind of cool to be like, Oh yeah, yeah. we were there. <laughs> yeah. Columbia, Missouri of all places. Why am I not in this fucking book? <laughs> <laughs> Don't you know I was there? But yeah. Yeah. That's weird. That's yeah. how that came together. Now you guys recorded in Memphis too. Um, yeah. Song. yeah. I mean that we, we, we did right. it. Right after that, that was the summer vacation. So that's uh, the, yeah, album. that's where you recorded. Uh huh. Cool. I love that town. It's a great fucking town. Nice people anywhere. Yeah, we 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 spent a month there, and it's crazy because I've been in uh, a couple bands since then, and even another band that had a what you would call a major label recording contract. Mm -hmm. But uh, Truck Stop Love is the only band I've been in where we spent an entire month <laughs> in the studio. In a in a house, you know, nearby, working on one piece mm -hmm. of music for right. that long, and we we spent the you know we spent the a, a, a quotient, a small portion of what you would consider a major label budget mm -hmm. back then. But uh, we actually got mm -hmm. to do that, and it was really cool because um, that doesn't happen no. for a lot of bands. So, what were you doing in uh, Memphis when you weren't uh, recording? What right, were you doing there. Uh... We went to yeah. shows. Uh, remember, we went and saw. Uh, Ween somewhere. Ween was playing in town. Oh. And, uh, we went to Graceland and we went to Sun and mm -hmm, we went to yeah. uh, Stax was already rubble mm -hmm. by then. Um, uh, yeah. And what was that bar that the Almon that Greg Almon used to sing at? Rich, mm, not the one across the street. I can't <laughs> remember. We, there's a lot a of minute. things I can't remember. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> well, see, Jody would only work from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Hmm. Yes. And then he went home at 10 p.m. Yeah. every day. And yeah. that's when it kind of got rowdy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> After <laughs> he left. <laughs> well, because Jeff Powell was the co the other co-producer. And so Jeff right. Powell was the guy mm -hmm. running the board. And uh, he would stick around a little bit later. And we'd, we'd get right. left with him after Jody left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there was a place across the street we went to all the time. I can't remember the name of it. And have yeah. a few beers. and. Yeah, it was. I mean, it was cool. I just remember listening to the the Jayhawks had a new record out at the time, and we were right. listening to the mm -hmm. Rito Brothers, Gilded Palace of Sin, oh, yeah. like really getting into the good stuff. Yeah. And uh, then every day I'd get into the studio, and Rich had Rich was already up. Rich was always an early mm -hmm. riser, and he'd yeah. be in the studio singing and playing guitar, and I'd be stumbling in with <laughs> all bleary eyes. <laughs> <laughs> And then they'd be like, yeah, we already tracked oh. half of Rich's vocals today. I'm like, all right. Oh, wow. Well, hmm. Nice. <laughs> That's how you got that sound, yeah. though. Right. Yeah. That original sound. It wouldn't have been the same if you'd have been, you know, straight. No. <laughs> Probably not. You yeah. never know. So I know you guys both have kind of some uh, projects going on the side. Yeah. You, you want to talk a little bit about those? Oh, uh, sure. I have a band up here. Yeah. We just, we put out a record last year. Where is year. up here so everybody knows? Minneapolis. Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. In Minneapolis. Yeah. And uh, it's Jim Kriegos in the band who replaced Matt Mosier and Truck Stop Love. It's called Rich Yargis and the Pot Mechanics. And we are also yes. on Black Site Records. Yep. I'm liking falling down that Black Site Records hole. Um, Let's see. Yeah. Good artist. Yeah. There's a lot mm -hmm. of good bands on there. Yeah, that's a good thing about this. So, yeah, we've been playing for 
I don't know, four years now. Uh-huh. Getting a pretty good uh, following up there. Yeah. Gigging a lot. Or... Yeah, it's the scene's kind of weird up here. It's it's big, mm-hmm. and you got to sometimes you got to be kind of old school yeah. to fit uh-huh. in, you know. And you know, Jim is, but I don't know. It's just, it's a weird, it can be a yeah. weird scene. Yeah, it's interesting. We were talking to some younger kids um, earlier in this, uh, a couple of weeks ago from a band called Sharp Star, and uh, they're out of Paducah, Kentucky, and we were just kind of trying to lean on them and say, you know, what's the scene like there? And like, and they were like, we don't know. We we don't do the scene. We just went straight online. <laughs> we don't leave the house. Yeah. <laughs> we went <laughs> we just straight right right. that. And they're just like, we went global. They're like, you know, we've got a lot of fans all over the world. And it's just like, you know, we don't. We don't play local. He's like, every once in a while, we'll play a little, you know, show here or there. And it's like, I just latched on because I thought right. the music was good. But it's like, it's it's so weird how that's changed. That right. Like, that's the difference, you know, between like where, you know, when we started, where you made your own flyers and you stapled right. them up uh-huh. around town to now. I mean. Right. I now mean, you the, develop an email list. You're and... on YouTube mm-hmm. and whatever. And. You know, and I don't even do, do bands even yeah. get signed anymore. I mean, you know, that used yeah. to be a huge deal, but now it's you never hear of a band that actually gets yeah. signed because people could produce their own music now, you know, right mm-hmm. at their kitchen table with technology. They don't have to go yeah. to the studio. We were talking to Gary, right. uh, Gary Lee Connor about that just the other week. We had some technical problems. We're going to get back with him but it's just like from the screaming trees to our player and he's okay. he's got his own solo shit going on now and it's it's different from the trees it's a lot more psychedelia i mean i think he, he kind of brought the psychedelia yeah. to the trees but like it, just the way he's mm-hmm. talking about doing that where he's just like you know now i just go like straight to streaming services band camp um You're right all the shit and the way that he's adapting yeah. to it it's just you know which i find is nice that you know, at least you can find that somebody's adapting to it rather than just getting angry at the whole thing. You know? Um, yeah, I mean, when we when we put that LP out with, like, all the demos, you know, going through all of the, what little, the mm. archives we all had, just seeing some of the, you know, like the newsletter we would send out, literally mail out a newsletter to people right. with our tour schedule on it. Yeah. You know, and notes about what we were doing and what we were recording mm-hmm. and when the record was. Co- I mean, that's right. the only way you could get the info to people. Yeah, it was so. And they much just harder. signed their name mm-hmm. on a notebook. Yeah, at the I've show. done that a lot. Yeah. Yep. And, and gotta then, go get some stamps. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Right. So you forget about that because I, you know, I saw a couple. Of those, I'm like, fuck. Did we really play all those shows <laughs> right. in a row like that? It's really hard yeah. to imagine. Yeah. Well, I think that's the thing is just technology is moving yeah, faster crazy. than anybody can adapt to it. You know, I think I think there's so much. I mean, just like right. the, that the internet, live streaming video, everything else is capable of it, not just in music, but in every industry. It's capable of doing so much that we can't even it's it's far ahead of what we can implement with it. And I think that's just what bands are going to have to do. It's just uh, just adapt. But well, yeah, you got to. I mean, yeah, you got to. I mean, even just the few shows that I play with my current band, it's you know, you just got to do a Facebook event, and that, and the clubs want you to do that, and they want you, they, they want to be a co-host, yeah. and you know, yeah. all that. And it's stuff, weird that know? like, but still, there's like this thing for uh, vinyl too. And it's like we've talked about this. But it's still the tactile right. thing, and it's yeah, like because like yeah. I was looking at that yeah. uh, the the vinyl. Uh, um, you guys have released re- recently and it's like oh yeah i'm buying that fucker as soon as i get paid and uh i will next week by the right. way right <laughs> <laughs> no wait a couple days the paycheck <laughs> well, I'm gonna i need to get there it's like we you know i uh and it's weird to get like a record and then you get a little slip in it it's like download all these songs on mp3 and other to me that's like a bonus yeah. it's like oh, cool. right. I, get, I get it twice <laughs> No, oh, I get the vinyl and right. the songs digitally. Yeah, right. Well, we were originally going to put uh, a lot more songs on the record, but they were like, you know, we can't afford yeah. this to be a double album, so let's let's put the record out on a single vinyl release, and then when you get it and you buy it, then you'll get the download uh-huh. card and you get all the extra songs. So you're going to get the uh, the twelve and a half minute epic cool. 
rock trilogy from Truck Stop Love in D minor, the saddest of all keys. This one goes to 11. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but no, we, we, we made sure to, to put a lot of cool stuff into that package because, um, you know, we come from that era where people had physical media and they would look at it while they were listening to stuff. And so we, we have really great liner notes in there by a friend of ours who's a, an author and a poet. Um, who was, uh, you know, back, mm -hmm. back with us in the early days. And, uh, those are really great. And there's some, a ton of cool old, old photos and lots of fun stuff in there. So we, we, we cool. put that together with that a lot great. of care. So hopefully, uh, hopefully people that yeah. invest in it will appreciate it. Yeah. And we definitely yeah. want to promote that. And yeah, I've been sharing um, yeah. get that for ourselves. Black Sight Records. Not Ooh. quite the same, but. I dug up, I, I found like in the last week or so, just coincidentally, I was going through mm. my cassette box and I found my, uh, how I spent my summer vacation oh, nice. cassette. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to find something to play it on. Oh, that's but, collectible yeah. now. Kids are yeah. the one. They're coming back. Bands putting yeah, stuff out on cassette. Yeah. They're playing the Black Site Showcase at that Lawrence Field Day Fest and one of the new younger Weird. bands on there, all they had was a cassette. <laughs> right. I'm like, who the fuck's got a cassette player? <laughs> I I actually still have right. one. It's just not hooked up to anything. <laughs> Mine right broke. Now. Mine it was the, yeah. weird, the belts all dried up on it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you gotta use them or they get dried yeah. up. Right, those, exactly. I actually bought like one of the old uh, at a at a yard sale uh recently and i haven't messed with it yet i just got it because i thought it was fucking fun like the old like box panasonic yeah like you know what i'm talking them. about yeah it's got the handle and just the single speaker and you push the record yeah. and the play button together like if you want to record oh, something and, Star. okay yeah yeah i got it for like a couple of bucks <laughs> i don't even know if i want to use it i just like having sculpture it. i don't know yeah it seemed worth it to me yeah it's funny i'm sure those kids selling the slinging the cassettes probably got a little download slip inside the inside the i'm sure you probably get a download with it yeah i mean i kind of understood the nostalgia of like the eight track where it's like but that man that thing sucked i mean it's like you go halfway through a song and it would stop and you have to flip it <laughs> you know it didn't care like right. when it cut the music off yeah. or whenever we we had that player craft. yeah but oh um, yeah i grew up with an eight track player Oh yeah, uh, it hissed yeah, so bad too. There was just like this constant hiss <laughs> yeah. to it, and then the <laughs> well, it sounded so great. Now it's not like vinyl. I, yeah, I like vinyl though. Uh, I, mean, I totally want an eight track <laughs> player <laughs> though. I keep looking out for one. Yeah, just to say I have it, man. When we when we first got to Manhattan, Yargus would come over huh. to the Mango House. We had all kinds of eight tracks. Yeah, nice. we'd buy them from the from Grandma's trunk, which is like the local thrift store, and you know they're already on their <laughs> right. last legs because they've been around for a decade or two. And we'd put them in; and they'd last like for half the album, and then they'd just break. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. You find oh, any man. gems? You got a bunch of Tyrannosaurus Rex ones. Yeah, Tyrannosaurus, uh, not T Rex. Wow. Before that, wow. It was all I like, was <laughs> singing about hobbits, and elves. And stuff. <laughs> oh, that's great. You know what I've been kind of getting into recently was um, Budgie. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, shit. Yeah. 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 Kind of getting yeah. back to that era. I only know Budgie from the Metallica cover. So. That fan. Yeah, yeah. They're really good. They're good. Yeah. Still early prog rockers. Yeah. Yeah. You listen to it and you're like, this was how long ago? Yeah. Holy it, shit. Even for that cover, it's pretty interesting to hear. And know that, yeah. I, I do like the I do like the budgie version better, but that's that's probably my favorite. It, that is my favorite Metallica album. I know that is the uh, Garage Days. Mm -hmm. We revisited the one that's all covers. It's my my favorite mm -hmm. one. Jason oh, that's says something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chilling joke on there. Yeah, the Misfits. Your favorite yeah. Metallica album or songs not written by them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now, yeah, that's not saying I didn't like Justice or I didn't like, uh, you know, Master of Puppets. I fucking love those records, but my favorite still, yeah, them covering. Yeah, I like bass guitar, so I can't like Justice. Yeah, <laughs> because you can't. <laughs> it's not there. <laughs> the justice. I saw something recently right. where they were trying to say that it's like, oh, that totally wasn't like, because the rumor was the intent was like that they were just burying Newstead or like cutting him out of the record. 
You're like, oh, that totally wasn't our intent. We were just too focused on our own tracks to know that. Yeah, whatever. You could never. <laughs> they dicked <laughs> Newstead around. Yeah. Saying that they're too focused on their own tracks is, is the, the exact problem. <laughs> That's kind of what I said. <laughs> it's like, yeah, so focused, in fact, that you didn't hear your fucking bass player. <laughs> Yeah. It didn't incorporate his track at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's sad. I wonder why he decided he wanted to leave. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sad. That's sad how that fell apart. I used to love Metallica. So you guys got any uh and and, and like we said, it's it's kinda hard to keep track of, you know, are you together? Are you not together? Are we well, I mean now, Eric, you're where? We talked about this a little bit before. I just moved to Sacramento. In Sacramento, who who are you playing? Are you yeah. playing with a, a band there? And no, I'm essentially uh, what I like to call a reunion show drummer uh-huh. exclusively. Right. So <laughs> I play with Truck Stop Love and Ultimate Fake Book and the Dead Girls, but only when we decide to have reunion shows. Oh, okay. got it. Right on. All right. And so Ultimate Fake Book has a new album coming out next year, which is our oh, yeah? first one in 15 years, which will be really cool. Ooh. Truck Stop Love put out that one last year, and actually, Truck Stop Love has some new stuff coming up too. And I'm when I say new, I mean old new. But mm-hmm. um, we did a bunch of uh, songs. We did a when I went when we went back through the old tapes uh, to listen to to put this album together. We found that there were like, I mean, Rich was what like writing ten songs a month. It seems oh, like, wow. and we demoed all mm-hmm. of them. So we have uh, we have a crap ton, an embarrassment of riches yet to come, and so. Uh, if if people keep buying Can't Hear It and the other stuff on our Bandcamp page, we'll raise enough money and we have a whole other record ready to go. Right on. I'll certainly do my part, and we will do our part right. um, to pimp it out for you guys. Just to be clear, you weren't calling Rich an embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm an embarrassment of riches. So... I'm yeah. real curious, uh, Eric, about this uh, air guitar stuff you've got going on. Oh, oh yeah, I know about this. Uh, there's that. <laughs> That's a secret to me. Uh, I, I haven't heard about this. What's going on? Well, I, I started air guitaring competitively in 2009, and then in 2013, I flew to Finland and won the air guitar world. Really? <laughs> nice. Wow. I didn't yeah. know that. Mean Malene. Ah. Cool. That's that's my that's my stage name, Mean Malene. So I've been to Finland the last six years, and they're celebrating their twenty fifth twenty uh, fifth anniversary of making air, not war, uh, in Finland next year. And so I hope uh, hope to to go oh, again. Wow. So it's a pretty pretty amazing, yeah. weird uh, international community of of freaks from all over the world yeah. who just you know. <laughs> Like to play air guitar. Do you have a, do you have a like rival, or is, is it pretty cutthroat, or, or how's it go? No, I'm retired. I'm officially retired. Yeah, yeah. I Going mean, once on you're top, at the top, man. there's nowhere to yeah. go down. So that's true. <laughs> <laughs> He's just Although a celebrity yeah. now. Yeah, it's not like I just retired at the top. I was defeated and came in third, and then <laughs> okay. I retired. <laughs> <laughs> I have to lose the belt. Let's be clear. Oh, yeah. yeah, pretty cutthroat, or I mean, is there a <laughs> No, it's is hilarious, there? man. It is. It really is like a community of people, and like every year somebody has to win. Uh-huh. But it's like there's no hard feelings, you know. Like everybody's friends. Like the guy who uh, beat me in in the U.S. that year is coming to Sacramento to visit oh, next right. week. Nice. Yeah, That's we're awesome. all friends. It's it is awesome. It's it's a uh, it's just a weird you know group of people. And the internet, you know, these days we want to talk about great things about mm-hmm. the internet is it keeps everybody in touch yes. with each other. And then we have like this meeting place, you know, in Olu, Finland every year that people can go to if they can get time off work and if they can afford right. it. And, uh, you know, if they've won their respective country and if not, then we see them the next cool. year, you know? And yeah. I remember seeing really a documentary cool. that they yeah. made on that oh, this was years mm. ago. It was really good. Yeah. That's what got me huh. into it. Yeah. yeah. I saw the documentary and then they came to Kansas city and I competed uh, three months later and got into the ah. yeah because i was wondering it's why i asked whether it's cutthroat because i remember some scene from that documentary where they were talking like oh this girl used props or something like that and you can't do that or you know <laughs> these guys were just like yeah. you know bitching about the rules and it's like wow wonder. they play it up in the documentary right like everybody's like real serious uh, about but it but they're not but nobody is <laughs> yeah so, you know, that's pretty yeah. typical everybody knows it's a joke so we're all winking at the same <laughs> I time i would hope you know? so <laughs> A little bit like uh, 
you know wrestling or something right. like that like yeah. it's exactly like wrestling it's like we have these larger than life characters and then we're you know we come out with costumes and a persona and we play that persona and yeah it's it's oh all that God. stuff except it mixed right. with rock and roll so did you get all your moves just kind of sitting behind you know uh rich at the <laughs> while you're sitting with the kid just watching oh all this God. happen <laughs> totally totally I've, I've been playing the drums now you know, for like 20 something years before yeah. I started playing air guitar and I'm sick of <laughs> sitting down and being in the back. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's what it's all about. I was like, I got to get out there. You are always playing air guitar though, man. Yeah. It's, it's a pretty quick turnaround. You always plays air guitar. <laughs> always. It's true. So what made you go drums if you were just a natural air guitar <laughs> player? I'm curious. Well, I did try to play the guitar. I was oh, terrible at it. Yeah. Me it too. It was really like, you know, I, I tried to form some chords. I had an acoustic guitar. It hurt my fingers. It didn't work out. And then I bought a shitty drum set, you know, with my allowance in high school for a mm -hmm. hundred bucks and uh, sat down and I was like, Ooh, this just Ow. feels right. Like it was just obvious. Like yeah. right away. So what was your, uh, what was your air guitar jam? Or what did you win the title on? What song? Oh yeah. Good question. Yeah. <laughs> That's a long story too. Um, I ended up doing a, a TEDx talk mm -hmm. about it. Um, because I wrote my own song. Oh wow! Ah, so I'm I'm playing the drums on a song that I composed with my friend Doug, Rich's former roommate, who's yeah. an amazing guitar player, and uh, we put together a one minute air guitar song, and then I air guitar wow. to it. So you're doing a song that maybe people weren't familiar with, but you still won. So you didn't have to rely on the uh, the safety of it being like a real popular cover or anything like that. Yeah, I used to think that was, uh, that was like important. Uh -huh. And I was in the competition, you know, like I said, for many years leading up to this. And I did Bohemian Rhapsody one year and it didn't help me at all. Really? And um, so I realized it doesn't really have anything to do with the popularity of the song. I huh. just want to see the movement and the motion and the comedy kind of line up together. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. So we created the ultimate air guitar song and then that's what I did. Oh, uh, wow. so w was it like a deliberate intention? I like, this is going to be <laughs> an air. This guitar. is a song Everything. written for, for air guitar. guitar. It's, right. Absolutely. It's the demo for air guitar. Kind of like you're writing for like a TV or <laughs> movie score or video game. You have the uh, actor in mind. It had sound effects. It plays backwards. Mm. It has backwards masking and talking. And, That's yeah. mm, fucking awesome. I'm surprised some people <laughs> didn't think of it like an unfair advantage. That like, oh well, he wrote it, so he knows like yeah, every they note. Did. <laughs> they did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, hey, it just says, you know. <laughs> This is how long it needs to be, and that's how long it is. It's not in the rule. People are like, what song are you doing? I said, I wrote it. Yeah. And they're like, what? What? That's not fair. That's great. Check your rules. <laughs> but I was already 40, what, 43, 42 or 43 at that point. Yeah. So I was like way older than anyone that had ever won, and I needed <laughs> a, something to be like an advantage. Put you over the top. Yep. <laughs> did you have to like scour the rule books and make sure that that was okay? Or did you just uh, not give yeah. a Yeah, I mean, it wasn't too hard. It was on a blog. <laughs> right. <laughs> scour the one email you get. Yeah. <laughs> See whether that's cool or not. Yeah. Huh. So, what's the grand prize for something like that? A guitar. A guitar. Let's we'll see, you get an actual guitar. Yep. I want a, a custom made flying fin guitar, which is this guy in Finland who like makes these handcrafted guitars and he does a different one every year for the winter. And so oh, cool. They're one of a kind. It's actually really cool. I have no idea how to play it, but it's up on my wall. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I've got a lot of guitars on my <laughs> walls that I can't play very well. Rich, you ever seen this guitar? How's it, how's it handle? Well, I've never played it. I've seen it. Mm. You got to bring it to your neck. Is it a real guitar or is it the one that's just a stand, Eric? <laughs> Picture of a No, this is, a, ironically, it's clear. Mm. <laughs> right. It's a hollow, clear body, yeah. yeah. Or perfect. Okay. Yeah. Like a, yeah. Uh, you have to bring it, you have to bring it on your next uh, reunion show, I think. Yeah. For sure. Well, well it's a, yeah. that, that stays in my house. I'm not going to uh -huh. bring that out. <laughs> I'm not gonna let Rich play it. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen what he does to guitars? Right. TV. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just ask him. TV. You might just forget. So, any other good road stories or meeting other artists stories, stuff like that? We you know, we eat. Worst show, bad show. Um, Worst show, yeah. Great show. Yeah, I'm just thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we got lots of road stories. 
crazy road stories, mm-hmm. but yeah, we uh, you know, we like Eric said before, we would just get in our van and go. I mean, we'd go for a couple months sometimes. Mm-hmm. You know, and a lot of times we just, we headlined our own shows, but ironically, one of the first shows we played in Chicago, Everclear actually opened for us Ooh, Wow! <laughs> and then, and then blew up shortly after yeah. that. Um, and then we did a little bit, did another little tour with them. You know, I think it was in 95. Would have been about the time. So it was them and this really good band called Ruth Ruth. They put out a couple records. And then, yeah, I'm not familiar. They were, they're kind of, uh, you know, they kind of didn't fit in that genre either. They had one song that kind of was a bit of a hit, but it didn't sound like any of their other songs. Huh. They were somewhat uh, poppy, kind of power pop. Right. Ruth, Ruth. Pretty good band. Hmm. Yeah. Have to check them out. We used to play with Hum all the time. Oh, yeah, 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 we like Hum. We invited, yeah, yeah, we invited them on. I think, uh, I think they're kind of busy right now. We played with them in uh, Manhattan, and it was Kriega, Jim's first show with us. Mm-hmm. And they show up in a fucking tour bus because their their album was blown up. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was their first tour bus, <laughs> right? Yeah, when they like, were just riding the wave. We we're like, whoa, what's going on? Yeah, stars is the Just single this or... club with us, you know. Yeah. yeah. So we ended up driving the tour bus. I think the tour bus. I was staying in this like fourplex apartment, and I had the after hours party at my house. Mm-hmm. And I don't know what, how the fuck they had like a deer target in the tour bus. <laughs> 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 they brought over to my house. I can't believe the police never came that night. Just like, like a stand up people one, in, or yeah, oh, right. yeah, it was like a hundred people out in the parking lot and in and out of my apartment. <laughs> yeah, it was like crazy. a 3D deer, like an architect, or like a archery uh, deer. Yeah, yeah like, thing, an archery like a deer deer yeah, it looked like a 3D deer. <laughs> I don't know where they got that at. <laughs> probably took it out of someone's yard, or... <laughs> probably, probably, yeah, <laughs> yeah, go get it, yep. Yeah. Yeah. I see them all the time around here. I never saw one. But... We had played with them, uh, you know, when they were just on 12 inch. And I remember yeah. the one of the very first shows we played in New York. I think it was, uh, I don't know, Rich, if it was a CMJ th- show or not, but it was us and Hum and like six other bands at the Continental or something. Mm-hmm. Oh. And we were all like across the street drinking 40s. And we were like, hey, we're in New York. Right. We can drink on the street. <laughs> <laughs> right. We thought right. it was like this. <laughs> This really great thing to like, you know, get a forty ounce of high life and put it in a brown paper bag and like mm-hmm. act up and do the right thing, you know. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know? there were there were a couple bands like Hum, you know, that were uh, an Everclear that we toured with back before they were famous and yeah. when they got famous. Oh, so large sizes. Cool. Oh yeah, they were played amazing. a lot of shows with them. Who was that? How so large sizes? From uh, Cedar Falls, <laughs> I don't really. I don't know. No, I don't, do I know them? You know them? I, I could lie. Maybe I don't. Yeah, but I, I don't. I'm <laughs> sorry. But I mean, oh, yeah, you, you guys should check them out. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah, they were awesome. It was a husband and wife, and then okay. yeah, and then pretty, you know, good, you know, ACDC kind of riffage. But, yeah, you know, real good band. Hmm. No, we'll check that out. We're always looking. Yeah, tell us what to check out because we like to mm-hmm. get turned on to new stuff all the time. Absolutely. Yeah, I would check yeah. out House of Large Sizes, My Ass Kicking Life, and Glass Cockpit. Those records right. are amazing. Okay. okay. All right, Glass Cockpit. You guys will love them. It's it's right. total Midwest rock, but like Rich said, like filtered through ACDC. Cool. Right. Sounds good to me. I like that kind of shit. Really do. But they taught us a lot. They were really tight, you know. Mm-hmm. Like they were the opposite right. of us. We would just go out yeah. and slop our way through, and then we saw them, and we were like, "Oh my god!" They all stop and start at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they How have, do they do they that? Like a, yeah. They have like a set list with lines drawn in it when you're supposed to pause. Oh wow! <laughs> Where you never, you never what? knew when one of us was just gonna pause for five minutes. Right. Go take a leak. <laughs> so, <laughs> we right. So we did a like a two week tour with them. And the last night, you know, when you do a tour with bands in the old days, anyway, you used to play Kinda. practical jokes uh-huh. that last night. Yeah. So we were going to play a practical joke on them, uh-huh. and their sound guys like, "Don't fucking do it. <laughs> fucking Dave will fucking kick your fucking ass." 
<laughs> if you, you fuck with their was, set. Right? <laughs> we were going to talk to him through the microphone. Well, specifically. The oh, oh, they had the, like the ear monitors. They had all these songs. No, this would be through the PA. <laughs> oh, oh, so yeah. Yeah. They had all these songs that were like really tight and they would have these long breaks. And we knew all their songs at that point, so we knew right where the breaks were. So they would have a song that would be like, bum, 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 right. but they don't. And we start again. We were going to get on the mic in between the breaks and go, hey! <laughs> <laughs> like, we were going to make like stupid noises between all the breaks in their songs. And the sound guy was like, do not fucking do that. So we didn't. No. Do that. That's a shame. No, we didn't. That's a shame. Uh, yeah, Dave like Barb, if you're listening, <laughs> I'm sorry. We didn't do it. Well, don't apologize if you didn't do it. <laughs> He should be yeah, thanking you. Yeah. We wanted to. <laughs> no, he's saying, sorry, we didn't do oh. it. We should have <laughs> yeah, totally should've done should've that. Been, yeah, we had enough drinks that night to do uh, it. Uh, yeah, absolutely. My God. That'd be great if there was still, you know, if there was video back then for. <laughs> right. Well, I'm glad, probably glad there wasn't because. <laughs> yep, a career ender. People to take pictures. <laughs> oh, God. We're happy to let the legend be. Yes. Legend. Yeah. Right. Ron and I have talked many times about <laughs> how it is a blessing that YouTube was not in existence <clears throat> when we were in those particular years. Yeah. I think it affected a lot of decisions. Yeah. A lot of decisions. It probably does now that, you know, things that happen or don't happen oh, are really yeah, based good. on whether or not somebody has a camera in their pocket. <laughs> And right, which everybody, right, does. everybody does now. <laughs> but back then, they didn't, yeah. so nobody's ever going to see me do this nope. shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, and people still think nobody's going to see it, and they'll put be like the <laughs> dumbest ass shit. I'm committing this crime, y'all. <laughs> well, I don't commit crime, but I still do the same me. thing <laughs> with Facebook posts. Shit. Uh oh, did we lose Eric? We might have. 